we should discuss computer networks now so before starting the computer networks we should know what is the main purpose of computer networks why should we use a computer networks and what are the main responsibilities of a computer network okay so what is the main purpose or responsibilities of a computer networks computer network assume if you have some processes within a same host or you can say within a same computer right for example you have this host in this host you have more than one processes you can have process p1 you can have process p2 and they are inside this host right now it is the responsibility of operating system to provide them the environment so that this process p1 can communicate with the process p2 or you can say uh, we can effectively do inter process communication we can effectively do inter process communication inter process communication so these processes want to do inter process communication right now when we discuss about computer networks and what is the main responsibility of a computer network assume you have two host this is the host h1 and this is the host h2 this is the host h2 this is the host h2 now inside this host h1 we can have more than one processes process p1 we can have process p2 in the same way in host h2 we can have more than one processes right and when these processes wants to communicate with each other for example here process p1 may want to communicate with the process p2 when these processes want to communicate with each other then the responsibility of computer networks is to provide them an environment in such a way that these processes should not think that they are in two different networks or you can say they are in two different hosts the responsibility of computer networks is to ensure that these processes should have the sufficient amount of resources which are available these processes should have sufficient amount of permissions which are available as well as uh, these processes should not feel that there are two different two different computers for example here uh, in case of one single operating system this operating system provides different application programming interfaces or you can say oh, apis using those apis these two processes can share data or they can communicate with each other but here because they are in two different systems now they should not feel that they are in two different systems they should feel that they are in one single host and the environment is such a way that they should feel like they are communicating with the same operating system and this is the main responsibility of computer network okay and this computer networks can be related to anything this can be related to a mobile application mobile computer network mobile networks or it, it can be related to different computers right so this computer networks is just not necessarily mean that we are only discussing about computers the host can be anything even you have walkie talkies walkie talkies are host and they have networks even you can have a wifi connection different hosts are connected through wifi you can have mobile phone and even different devices like tablets computers and so on so these devices can be connected to each other right now to for these processes to communicate with each other there is some uh, mandatory functionalities which are required and there are some uh, optional functionalities which are required for example you can say for this for a computer network there are some functionalities which are mandatory and there are some functionalities which are optional we can have some mandatory functionalities and we can have some optional functionalities optional functionalities so mandatory functionalities are the functionalities which should be there because if you don't have these kind of functionalities then you will not be able to perform a effective communication or you will not be able to do the communication more effectively for the functionalities to be mandatory so uh, we have uh, what uh, uh, think think about what are the functionalities which are mandatory what are the functionalities which are mandatory we can have functionalities like we have error control we have error control now error control is a mandatory functionality is why why because for example this process is sending some data through process p3 for example data is 110110 this is the data now if you are sending the data and because of some reason there is an error in the network error in the network and you change the bits this error is changing some bits or you can say it is affecting the data or changing some uh, data now if the process this process is receiving a wrong data then what is the benefit of having that wrong data is it is better than not having the data right having a wrong data is more more harmful as compared to having a having no data 
right so if you have error in the network then you cannot con uh, you cannot uh, do the communication effectively so if we discuss about the mandatory functionalities then error control is one of the most mandatory functionality in the network okay now the next important functionality here is the flow control is the flow control is the flow control so what is the flow control flow control deals with how the information is going to travel from this direction to this direction or can say from this direction to this direction when i'm saying flow control let, let me give you a very simple example of flow control p1 is sending data packet to p3 now if p3 is receiving the data packet now p3 should send acknowledgement after p1 receives that acknowledgement then p1 can be sure that the data packet is received by p3 so p1 can send the next data packet that means how you send the data and how will you ensure the data is successfully delivered that is called as flow control right in the third we have we have access control we have access control what is access control access control means for example if at the same time p1 is sending data from p1 to p2 and p2 is also sending the data from p2 to p3 so p3 to p1 now if both the hosts are sending the data at the same time then obviously at some point of time there will be collision there will be collision in the network if they are sending the data at the same time then there will be collision in the network now when i'm saying access control access control means we should we should give permission to a network or we should define access that at what time what host can access the network so that if they send the data at the same time the data should not be collided should not collide with each other next functionality after access control is addressing is addressing addressing what is addressing addressing means for example if you have more than one hosts which are connected with the same network if you have more than one host you are connected with the same network and if this host want to send the data to this host now it should specify it should specify that to what host you want to send the data or to which host you want to uh, send the data and for that ad, for that host we need to have an address of that location address of that particular host for example within one network for example even if you are having a wifi network at your home in that case also uh, you may be having more than one devices which are connected to the wifi you may be having a laptop you may be having a computer you may be having a mobile phone maybe your ac is also connected with the laptop you have a camera that is also connected with the laptop now if you want to send some data then you should know that to which device you want to send the data and what is the address of that device so addressing is also important or you can say mandatory functionalities in the same way we have approximately 70 to 80 such functionalities which are mandatory now if you discuss about the optional functionalities there are a lot of functionalities which are optional when i'm discussing about optional func functionalities that there is a functionality called as called as encryption and decryption encryption and decryption that means without even doing encryption and decryption you can do the communication effectively without even doing encryption and decryption you can do the communication effectively right encryption and decryption is optional because for for example some networks you want to pro provide more security in that case you may be doing encryption and decryption right second optional functionality is for example encryption and decryption also includes the security functionalities also second optional functionality is for example checkpointing second optional functionality is checkpointing why checkpointing checkpointing means for example if you are downloading some file then you should know that to what extent you have already downloaded this file that is checkpointing so that you can pause the download and you can resume the that particular download that is checkpointing in the same way we have different functionalities like routing right so etc etc so we have these kind of functionalities which are optional these are the functionalities which are mandatory and these are the functionalities which are optional right so what the operating what this computer network designers have done is they used these functionalities and they implemented these functionalities in different modules different modules why i'm saying different modules because it is better to implement the functionalities in a modular fashion as compared to implement the functionalities all at the same time because uh, you may be uh, uh, developing software in a team now within a team it is better to give some responsibilities to one team and other responsibilities to the other team so they 
they kind of divided these functionalities into different layers. So what are those layers? Those layers are application, application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical network data link and physical how can you remember it aap per se transport nahi de paya aap per se transport nahi de paya application presentation session network data link and physical where physical layer actually deals with the physical characteristics of the network that means what is the topology of the network what is the medium of the network for example you may be having a lan LAN connection, you may be having a wireless connection, right? So it may be having a coaxial cable and so on. What are the physical characteristics of the network that is dealt, that dealt by the physical layer? Now, if you discuss about the data link layer, then data link layer deals with the characteristics related to error control, flow control, and access control. Now, see, this error control actually done in every layer of computer networks. In every layer, we have error control. Right. So, but still we are going to study error control in one or two layers only. For example, we are going to study error control in transport layer, data link layer, etc. But for example, this data link layer is going to implement the functionalities related to flow control and error control. Then we have network layer. Now this network layer deals with the host to host connectivity. It deals with the host to host connectivity. Data link layer deals with hop to hop connectivity transport layer deals with end to end connectivity transport layer deals with end to end connectivity and we have application presentation and session layer now what do i mean when i'm saying we have uh, this end to end connectivity host to host connectivity and hop to hop connectivity so let me clear this diagram and let me show you so what do i mean by end to end host to host and hop to hop connectivity assume this is the host h1 this is the host h1 this is the host h2 this is the host h2 they are connected through the network they are connected through the network in this network may be having different routers may be having different routers and this host may be having different processes this is the process p1 this is the process p2 we can have more than one processes we can have more than one processes Okay, now when I'm saying we are discussing about hop to hop connectivity, hop to hop means this is one hop, one router to the other router, this is one hop, this is one hop, from here to here, this is one hop, and from here to here, this is one hop, right? So when we discuss about this data link layer, data link layer only deals with the hop to hop connectivity, for example, one router to the other router connectivity. Now, when we discuss about the network layer, network layer deals with the host, host to host connectivity, host to host. That means from this host, it ensures that data should data should be delivered from this particular host to this particular host. The data should be delivered from this particular host to this particular host. And when we discuss about the end-to-end -end connectivity, then end-to-end -end connectivity deals with the process to process connectivity, process to process. For example, this host may be having more than one process process p1 p2 p3 this will be having more than one process process p1 p2 p3 now when i'm saying uh, end to end that means from the, if we want to send data from process p1 to the process p2 then to what particular process or you can say what particular port the data will be delivered that is taken care by the transport layer we'll discuss about all these things in detail at later point of time next we have the session layer presentation layer and application layer this presentation layer deals with the pre presentation characteristics of the network presentation characteristics of the network when i'm what do i mean when i'm saying presentation connect characteristics for example these are two different operating systems and maybe you are sending your this operating system is using different uh, format to display characters maybe this is using a sky format this may be using a sky format and this may be using for example unicode just for simplicity for example unicode now a sky is a one byte one byte and unicode is of two bytes right obviously in case of a sky we can represent only a small number of symbols and in case of unicode we can represent more number of symbols now from this unicode 
from this unicode we may be send we may be sending the data from this host to this host and that is uh, coded in unicode 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 may be that means for example in unicode it is of two bytes we have so many different languages which are represented in unicode for example we have chinese language we have sanskrit we have hindi and so on so these are the special there are different special characters which can be shown in unicode because unicode can show more number of symbols and this can show less number of symbols now if those symbols will travel through this network to this system now because it is it can only show a limited number of symbols so uh, there should not be any problem related to that that means if for example if you are showing some data here right if you are showing some data here and because of this system maybe let us assume, let us assume it is the data is my name is my name is and when this data is traveled from this system to this system now it should not be something like this right so because it the data may not change so the presentation of data should be same right so that is dealt by the presentation layer we'll discuss about this at later point of time in complete detail and then we discuss about the application layer we discuss about the applications like we have ftp application we have uh, different applications so we are going to discuss about all those applications in application layer now in case of computer networks we will start with the data link layer and all these layers are going to create different chapters for example in case of data link layer we will discuss about the flow control access control methodology after data link layer we discuss about the network layer then transport layer then session presentation and application layer and at the last we come back to the physical layer at the last we will come back to the physical layer so we will start with the data link layer and all these layers actually create chapters for us so we'll discuss about this i this i this is iso osi model then we'll discuss about the tcp ip protocol also and uh, we'll take all these things one by one right so this is an introduction for the subject now we should start with the data link layer and what are the different kind of uh, terminologies associated before we start with the data link layer